Hello YouTubers. What we have here is the uh, IBM Model F keyboard. Now there are lots of videos on YouTube with typing demonstrations and the clickety-clack classic sound of the IBM Model F. So that's not what this video is about. I saw one video where a guy restored his where he basically uh, took it apart and cleaned the keys. This one's kind of dirty. I don't remember where I got it. Um, but what I want to do is I want to go a step further. Uh, this keyboard has a very iconic sound to it, and uh, I will give a short typing demonstration. Since you're here, if you haven't heard it, we'll, we'll go ahead and let you hear it. Offices used to be full of this sound. This, uh, the Model F came out with the uh, PCAT. There were a few variations of it. Um, I think the original uh, PC keyboard came out in 1984. Yep, towards the end of 84. Or no, that was the AT. Okay, the AT. Um, this is an earlier one. The later Model F had a display up here with your uh, three LEDs for power, caps lock, and num lock. <clears throat> and I think had a, a separation to the numeric keypad and a regular sized enter key. This one has a small enter key. As you can see there, it's uh, unlike your modern day keyboard. Um, but it did have the numeric keypad. This was, I think, the first of Model F to have the numeric keypad. I don't know if the original PC had it or not, but I could be wrong. I'd have to really go back and do more research. Anyway, uh, quick, a quick demonstration. This is a loud keyboard. You can imagine an office full of these. clickety clacketing away. If you listen carefully, you hear that sound like a switch closure. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disassemble this completely and I'm going to show you the mechanism. I have not seen another video where they show you the mechanism. So that's, what, that's where my video is going to be different. We're going to take the keyboard completely apart and I'm going to show you exactly what it is that makes that sound. It sounds like a switch closing and you can actually feel a little give Right as there's the click, you can feel just a little bit of give and a little uh, reduction in pressure. Um, and what's going on there, there's a, a plastic paddle with a spring on it. And you're pushing down on that spring until the spring buckles. And when the spring buckles, the paddle drops. So uh, we'll, we'll show you. We'll take it apart and we'll show you. Um, this thing is heavy. Uh, it's got to be three, three or four pounds. It's, it's metal. Solid steel. These feet are big and heavy and they make big satisfying clicks. You gotta push them in to get them to come back in. Got a heavy spring on them. Yeah. So I'm gonna open this thing up and then we'll take a close look inside and uh, then we'll begin taking it apart. There's two screws here on the back. Solid metal plate. And uh, <laughs> everything is beefy. Uh, the original PC and PCAT had steel cases and they were quite heavy. Not like your modern uh, PCs with the really thin steel. These had uh, solid heavy steel. You could put a, a cathode ray tube monitor on top of them and they could support the weight. Okay. This metal plate is heavier duty. I can hardly twist it. It's heavier duty than your the metal on your PC, modern PC case. And inside we've got another metal plate. Heavy again. Um, that's on the back of the keyboard. I mean, this is that's solid steel. Okay, for those of you interested, I don't know if you can see that, there we go. IBM part number, serial number, shop date, 48th week of 1992, and there's initials for the person that made the. Uh, the card, the PC board to the case, uh, the person who closed the case, final inspection was AA, tested, merge, whatever that is, merging the metal into the plastic, I suppose. We got a single board up here. And the date code on the chip is, uh, yeah, also 92. So this one was manufactured in 1992. Um, yeah, so that's definitely a a later date. I'm surprised it doesn't have a little display. Okay, well I'm going to pause the camera while I get the uh, keyboard out of here and uh, 
Then we'll take a look at the mechanism. Okay. I have got the keyboard out of the case and I have uh, removed the metal with the PC board and <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get this thing back together. <laughs> anyway. There's the back of the PC board. And you can see it's a bunch of contact points. It's all one board. This little, this little what looked like an attached PC board is actually just an extension of the main board. We got all the contact points and they would be electrically lined up in a grid so that when you uh, make contact here you're crossing two wires and it's just a big grid. So several keys will share bus wires the PC board has little tabs here that hold it to the metal plate. Yeah, it slides. There we go. And the metal plate has a plastic insulator that sits on it. And you can see the PC board has a slight curve to it from being on this curved metal plate. Let's see if I can get this back on here. Getting this thing back together is not going to be fun. I think what I'll have to do is take all the keycaps off because, yep, you can see how they're all dropping in once the, well, I guess if I prop it up on the ends, I'll be able to, to get it back on there. Okay. Here it is. Here is the magic piece. It's a little paddle with a spring and that spring, how can I illustrate this? Here we go. There are two little, two little uh, rocker points back here and the spring is back a little off center and when you push down on the key that spring buckles and when it buckles that paddle will slap forward and then it'll, there we go. I'm trying to get this so you can see it, I certainly hope. There we go. See that pivoting motion? So these pivots are sandwiched yeah, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so these pivots sit down on little ridges here and are pressed against the spring. And when you push the key, turn this around so you can get so you can see where my thumb is. Yeah. You see that? When I push the key, it reaches a point where the spring buckles and it pushes the paddle up. And these paddles are coated with conductive carbon so when they slap against the uh, contact points on the uh, keyboard they make their contact. So that right there is what's making that click every time you push a key. That little paddle. space bar has, you can see it, it's towards me, there's a wire that runs along there between a couple of hinges and that stabilizes the space bar so that if you push on the left or right side of it, it pivots the entire thing down. Okay, well, I'm not going to let the camera run while I try to put this back together because that's going to be a task and I need to concentrate, but uh, anyway, that's what's inside the original IBM Model F keyboard. I guess I'll show you these feet too. These things have got springs. Look at this. Big wire spring pushing that outwards. Hefty, heavy duty, man. This is when office equipment was built. Adding machines and uh, phones were big Bakelite cases and this 
I can hardly flex this this thick heavy plastic. I mean that's uh oh gosh. That's a, a good third of an inch thick. <laughs> yeah, that's a good third of an inch third of an inch thick on that wall. Heavy, heavy, heavy plastic. Everything was heavy. Heavy metal, heavy plastic. Okay. I'm gonna put it back together. So uh I'll, uh, I'll time myself and I'll let you know when I turn the camera back on how long it took. I thought I'd take a moment here while I was doing this to um, show you one of these switch assemblies up close. I had to take all the uh, keycaps out in order to get the uh, switches to lay down flat and uh, rig a couple of things full of weight here to balance this on so that there's nothing pushing the keys up and then uh, <clears throat> I can just drop these in and they uh, they sit nice and flush in there so after I've got them all in I'll be able to put the PC board back on these metal tabs along the side go into slots in the metal plate it drops into the slots and then slides over uh, about a quarter inch to lock in place and then one of the tabs is actually bent over to, to hold the assembly in there. But what these uh, what these little switches look like, that's what the keycap, the whole switch assembly looks like. The spring-loaded paddle sits in there in those two pivots. The spring comes up out of the top here. And when the key is uh, pressed, you can probably do a better demonstration of it now that I got this out if you can see it when the spring is uh, pressed uh, there it goes I don't know if you can see that it reaches a point where it buckles and uh, pivots that paddle upwards so I think that these were assembled by hand I don't know if they had a machine that did this or not because these are individual parts Somebody would have had to lay out the foam piece, drop each of these plastic uh, switch assemblies in place, and then drop in the paddles into the switches. I don't think back then that this was assembled by machine. I think it was done by hand. The reason I wasn't too afraid of taking this apart is because I've done it before. Uh, back in the 90s, I serviced computers. In the early 90s, I worked at uh, Computer Corner and then a little tiny computer store here in Fort Wayne and then later at Computer Land and I had to replace a, a key switch in one of these keyboards at one point. They almost never failed. They are built so robustly that they, uh, they didn't wear out. Modern membrane keyboards, the membrane will get weak and uh, lose its spring. The carbon will wear off the contacts. But these things, they just never wore out. However, I did have, well, I can't say never, I did have one. And uh, these were so expensive back then, I'll have to go look up the price. If, uh, if I find it, I'll put a graphic up with the price of just the keyboard back in the early 90s. But they were expensive enough that it was worthwhile for somebody to come into the computer store and pay uh, $30 in labor and uh, 8 or $10 for the uh, replacement paddle key switch and I remember doing this and thinking I hope I never have to do it again well <laughs> here I am okay this is boring I'll stop talking I'll stop the camera and uh, and uh, start it up again after I got it all back together dum -de -dum -de -dee -de -dee -dee. oh yeah Isn't this fun? <laughs> uh, you get the keys that you know and then you go back and you fill the rest in as you go. Okay. 40 minutes. Exactly. 40 minutes. But hey. It's all back together. So there you go, the original IBM Model F keyboard and the internals.
Don't know what I'm going to do with it, but uh, now you've seen what's inside of it. Thanks for watching.